Listen na, I'm trying to get this job. Can you endorse me on LinkedIn, please? Hello, listen na. I'm trying to get this job. Can you please endorse me on LinkedIn? Endorsement is definitely one of the most popular features on LinkedIn. But what makes LinkedIn popular? Recommendations and job postings are certainly the contributing factors, but degree of connection is what makes the larger difference. In today's episode of One Byte at a Time, we are going to look at how LinkedIn has designed its algorithm to find the degree of connection. What does the degree of connection mean? On LinkedIn, you can see if someone's your first, second or third degree connection. Similarly, on Facebook, you can see if someone's your friend, a mutual friend or a friend of friends. Degree of connection is basically the distance between you and your connection. Considering LinkedIn, your first degree connection are the people you are directly connected with. Your second degree connections are people who are connected to your first degree connections. And third degree connections are people who are connected to the second degree connection. How does LinkedIn figure out your network of connection? On the surface, you know that this is how your connections are perceived. But what exactly does LinkedIn do in order to create the network of connection and understand the relationship between them? The answer to this question is graphs. Using graph-based algorithm helps in scaling from a couple of users to millions. Commonly, breadth-first search is preferred as it can help in bi-directional breadth searches. Using two breadth-first searches, one from the destination and one from the source can help us show the path when they collide. You can also do depth-first search, but it will find a path and not necessarily the shortest. This could be super inefficient because you and your user could be separated by just one degree separation, but the path might be two or three degrees longer. Now we know that the BFS and the DFS algorithms can be used to find the shortest path or any path for that matter. But how exactly are these algorithms used on LinkedIn to find the degree of connections? Even though BFS could find the shortest path, it would not be the best solution when there are a lot more edges and weights. Basically, when the graphs get complex, BFS would not be the right solution. So for this particular case, there is an algorithm available which is called the Jigstress algorithm, which is mainly used to find the shortest path between two different nodes. It could be two users, it could be two points. For example, Google Maps uses Jigstress algorithm to find the shortest path for you from your source to the destination. That is from your start point to the end point, it will give you the shortest path by using the Jigstress algorithm. Same way, social networks use the same algorithm in order to find the shortest path between two different users. Let's do a deep dive into the use of graphs to find the degree of connections right now. So there are essentially two types of graphs used on social networks, especially LinkedIn. One is an undirected graph and one is a directed graph. So an undirected graph is mainly used for connections. For example, user A is connected to user B. So in this case, user A and user B are connected to each other and there is no direction involved. If A sends the request to B or B sends the request to A, it does not matter because they both are connected to each other and there is no direction involved and thus an undirected graph is used in this case. But when it comes to following someone, for example, you follow Scalar. So you are only following the page. So in this case, a direction is involved. You as a user are following this particular page. So in this case, there is only one way of connection. So in this case, they would be using a directed graph. So these are the two types of graphs widely used. To understand it even better, let's take an example of this simple undirected graph. So A is connected to B, B is connected to C, C is connected to D and D is connected back to A. So now this particular graph could be represented in two different formats. One is an adjacency matrix and one is an adjacency list. So adjacency matrix is usually the faster option to go for. So if there are just four users in your network, in that case, adjacency matrix would be the fastest option. For example, if you want to find if A is connected to C, you just go to the row and the column of A and C. And if it is one, they are connected. If it is zero, they are not. 
So that would be a much faster option in this case. But what if in LinkedIn there are millions of users? So for that you'll have to create a matrix which has million rows and million columns. And you'll have to do that for every single user. So if you have to do that in that particular case, it'll take up a lot of space. That is space complexity will increase and that basically means the memory use will automatically increase and that will cost LinkedIn a lot of money. But an adjacency list is basically used in this case. So an adjacency list will just take up the connections you have and create a list for them. For example, in this case, A is connected to only B and D. So A, arrow and B and D. So this is a simple representation of A's connections. So the same way the B's connection is represented and also C and D's connections are also represented. But one more thing why we should go for adjacency list in LinkedIn, why they use a list rather than a matrix is because we are trying to identify the degree of connection. We are not trying to understand if person A is connected to person B or not. We want to understand how they are connected with each other. Now let's use this adjacency list to form a simple equation or a simple algorithm. First of all, the first degree connection. So the adjacency list itself, the first degree connection. For example, if you take A, B and D are its first degree connections and it is clearly mentioned in the list. Coming to B, so in this case, A and C are B's first degree connections and again, it is shown in the list. Same way you can see the first degree connections of A, B, C and D directly from the list. Now coming to the second degree connections, we already know that the second degree connections are basically the first degree connection of your first degree connection. So in this case, A's second degree connection is only C because B is connected to C and D is connected to C, but A is not directly connected to C. So in this case, A's first degree connection is B, B's first degree connection is C, that makes C the second degree connection. So there is a problem here. A is connected to B, but B is also connected to A. So that's basically makes it two edges, right? So A could be its own second degree connection. So in the algorithm, we should make sure it is neglected. That is A cannot be its own second degree connection. A is the starting point for itself. So that will make it the zeroth degree connection. Now coming to the third degree connection. So what is the third degree connection? It is the first degree connection of your second degree connection. But in this case, C is A's second degree connection, but C is connected to B and D. But B and D are already A's first degree connections, so they cannot be A's third degree connection. For example, let's take another letter E. So there is another user E and they are connected to C now. So now they're only connected to C. So now C is A's second degree connection and E is connected to C that makes E the third degree connection of A. But in this case, the first degree and second degree connections should be removed even though they could be a third degree connection as well. So keeping this all in mind, let's deduce a simple equation to figure this out. So the equation is basically the nth degree connection. That is, we are trying to figure out what is the nth degree connection. So the nth degree connection is basically the first degree connection of your n minus one degree connection. So let me give you an example. For example, a and B are connected with each other. So now there are two nodes. So two minus one is one. So that makes them the first degree connection. So now A is connected to C, but there are three different nodes. A is connected to B and B is connected to C. So there are three different nodes. So that is three minus one, and it makes C the second degree connection of A and A the second degree connection of C. Same way you can keep going. If there are four nodes, it would be the third degree connection. If there are five nodes between them, that would make it the fifth degree connection. And that keeps going on. But LinkedIn mostly ignores them. LinkedIn only gives you the connections for first, second and third. After that, it's just three plus degree connections. So this is how LinkedIn creates degree of connection. Do share your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you want to keep receiving new episodes where we decode day-to-day -day tech interaction, do make sure you follow Scalar.